working on the ranch. Long and time. yeah, that's it pretty much for the, for the study. And Ian, you opened at a very difficult time. Yeah. Very difficult time. How's that been for you? Well, you're still here. Still here. Um, <laughs> I think, in a way, I'm kind of blessed that we did open at a difficult time. Yeah. Um, I never relied on a certain kind of huge amount of income. I think yeah. if you do it tough at the start, then you're always going to appreciate growing and, and, and getting bigger as a business. So, so yeah. how does Michael fit within your stable of artists? Well, I mean, and what is your general philosophy? Well, the general philosophy for the gallery is that we showcase emerging artists um, from around the country, but also from around the region. And Mike's a very big part of defining that in a way because, because of his Filipino heritage, as is Bungert with his Thai heritage. Um, but to give you an idea of how important Mike is to me and to the stable and to the gallery, we're, um, we've been invited to the Hong Kong Art Fair next year. Fantastic. And Mike is going to be the feature artist in that show. That's incredible. <laughs> If I can briefly put that in context, um, uh, China has gone from being the fifth largest art economy in the world to the third largest art economy in the world in literally one and a half years. And the Hong Kong Art Fair is now the third most important art fair in the world after Art Basel and Art Miami, and there's Art Hong Kong. So the way art is done and the way business and the way collectors interact now has completely changed with the internet and the revolution, and fairs are a huge deal. And when you are go to the Hong Kong Art Fair and you are selected, you are essentially contextualised in the great stream of contemporary arts. There were 200 galleries at Hong Kong, yep. and there were about 500 galleries that didn't get in. Mm -hmm. it, and Australia.